From around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Partner Awards. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE program. We are here with the Amazon Web Services Public Sector Partner Awards Program. It's a celebration of AWS's public sectors, partners and their end user customers where there's been innovation and we're pleased to have on the show here the award winner for the most innovative AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning solution. Axial 3D is the AWS partner and the end user is Belfast Hospital. We got Roger Johnson, the CEO of Axial 3D, and Dr. Tim Brown, consultant transplant surgeon at Belfast Hospital, who has been doing amazing things, not only on the, as an innovative partner, but really during COVID, making things happen by solving the problem of the surgical gap and the number of surgeries that you're doing, really high performance, saving lives. Congratulations. First of all, congratulations, Roger and Dr. Tim Brown. Thanks for joining me. Real pleasure. Okay, let's get into it. Um, first of all, Dr. Tim Brown, I really want to commend you on the amazing work that you're doing. Before we get into some of the partnership uh, awards conversations, you have been at the front line solving a lot of problems around the gap between the number of surgeries that could take place with COVID. Um, tell that story real quick. I really think it's super important. Take a minute to explain. Yeah, yeah thanks for the opportunity. Um, it's, it's been an incredible roller coaster for the last three uh, months. Um, pretty much all of the transplant programs across the world who uh, have been affected by COVID have shut down, uh, but with some pretty innovative and um, real leadership and teamworking advances, we've, um, we've managed to open our program up again. And in Belfast, we have about um, 50, 50 deceased donor transplants a year. Uh, over the last three months, we've, we've just done 90, 90 kidney transplants and pretty much um, we've, we've cleared the whole waiting list in Northern Ireland, pretty much uh, for people waiting for a kidney transplant in this time. Um, it's been a remarkable few weeks, um, uh, but really is a testament to uh, the critical care community, the people that work in intensive care as to how much they support organ donation. And of course, uh, our, our, our donors who, who have given so selflessly at such a tragic time uh, for them. So I, I'd like to pay tribute to all of our donors and to the amazing amount of people who have been involved in the teamwork uh, in Belfast at this time. That's super amazing. Can you just, I just want to pause for a minute and just capture the number of order of magnitude. You said it was six to 10 yeah. for the year and you did nine zero, 90? Yeah, so in six we've weeks? basically done, we've done two, uh, two years work in six weeks, uh, all in the middle of the night as well. So it's been it's been hard hard work. So um, you, you can see the sleeplessness. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to catch up at the minute, um, but uh, it's been really really satisfying and an incredible outcome for our patients. Uh, the legacy um, of this of this uh, uh, program is going to last in Belfast for 40 years. Well, I want to say congratulations. I'll give you my CUBE award for not changing the world, but saving the world one person at a time. 90 interviews in six weeks. That's amazing. That's life changing. <laughs> Clearing the waiting list. You're really changing lives there. Congratulations. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Roger, what a great partner and customer you have here. Um, talk about this award you guys have. Talk about the company. What is this all about? Why are you guys in this position? Why are you winning? Yes, yeah, so I, I think our, our motivation for our company is driven by our, our, our partners such, such as Tim. What they're doing transforms care and even in these horrific situations or scenarios we have at the moment with COVID, I think you're hearing uh, the start of an, an amazing story. Our job is to give surgeons like Tim the, the best possible insight that he can have going into his surgeries. For the last 20 years, surgeons have relied largely on 2D imaging, so CT and MRI scans for, for being able to plan their surgeries, when in fact modern technology should allow them much greater insight before they actually perform their surgery. So we've created a technology that platforms on AWS that allows us to turn those traditional, hard to understand 2D images into micromillimeter precise models of the patient's exact anatomy. The value, hopefully, to, to amazing uh, colleagues like Tim is that instead of trying to interpret what a 2D image CT or MRI scan might mean, 
he can actually see for the first time before he opens the patient up exactly what he's going to find when when he uh, when he starts the surgery. So he can actually start uh, planning and complete that planning before the surgery actually takes place. So hopefully that allows a number of benefits uh, to result, whether that be shorter operations time, less uh, surgical equipment needing to be brought into the surgery, hopefully faster uh, uh, surgeries means less risk of infection for patients, means shorter bedtime, means better outcomes for the healthcare system, and most importantly, the patient. Awesome. Dr. Brent, I want to get your take on this. Can you describe the impact on your side? Because, you know, the future of work, which is everyone's been talking about in the tech industry for many years. Now with COVID, we were just talking about the successes you're having and changing lives and saving lives. The notion of work, workplace, work forces, work loads, work flows are all changing. Certainly the workplace, people aren't as on site as they used to be. Uh, the workforce has to be protected. How does the AI and how does the Axial 3D help you in your workflows? Are you getting more done? Can you, can you give specifics around the impact to your job? Yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a fantastic journey to date. Um, and we're still learning our way. Uh, it's a journey and we're, we're trying to work out exactly where this lies and the fact that COVID has now come along, which has changed our working practices uh, means that we have to look for different um, solutions um, and this I think is a very handy solution. So where it's come into my practice over the last three years uh, has been in terms of complex um, uh, renal surgery and um, on oncological surgery where um, we have for example um, a tumour in a kidney uh, where we think my goodness we're going to have to take this kidney out and throw it in the bin because uh, it's, it's very badly diseased. So um, the, the index case that we were involved with uh, was involving a, a, a chap who wanted to donate his kidney to his daughter. But when we worked him up, we found a tumour in his kidney, which ordinarily would have to be uh, discarded. Um, but thanks to the imaging that um, Exil was able to produce for us, we were able to plan well, choose well, cut well, and uh, as a result, we took the kidney out. We were able to plan uh, a, a removal of the tumor from the kidney itself. We were able to repair the kidney and then transplant it into his daughter. So with the um, technology that was available, we were able to save two lives uh, in one particular case. And um, it's, it's really grown from there. Um, where we've now been involved in five or six different real complex cases where um, the imaging has changed the outcomes for our, for our patients who ordinarily wouldn't have been able to uh, achieve those outcomes. I think um, the AI interface and the AI solution that we've, we've, we've uh, developed in our partnership with Axial, um, as I say, it's a journey and we're still finding our way, but the, the two insights that I've really got are, the first is that um, what we want to do is reduce uh, variability um, not just in our um, in our observers from the way that we interpret imaging uh, tradition, as Roger said, we look at 2D images. We're now able to sit and look at this uh, imaging uh, in a three-dimensional space at our desk, uh, rather than trying to reconstruct these things in our head. Um, we can now look at them and uh, discuss the different images with our colleagues in real time. Um, and as well as that, um, which I think is probably the most important thing, is that we're now able to engage our patients in a partnership uh, before we've had a bit of an unfair advantage that we're able to interpret these images because we've been 20 or 30 years um, of getting used to doing this uh, as professionals. Um, but the patients are presented with some incredibly difficult decisions to make about their own health um, uh, and with very little understanding. Uh, but now I can hand them a model of their own disease. They're able to understand and that gives my patient the autonomy to make the decisions about their own bodies back again. I think that's a hugely powerful, powerful uh, tool for these guys to have about potential decisions that they'll have to make that will affect them for the rest of their lives. So the problems you were solving was one, it was a technical problem. So you were trying to figure out manually, you get more insight into the, the imaging. And two, yes. the customer or the patient, in this case, customer, the patient, can make a yeah. better decision. Those are two problem statements that seem to be the big ones. Did I miss anything? Oh, absolutely, no, you got it in one, yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, so Axel 3D, you guys have a great solution. How did you get here? Um, tell us about your story. What's, what's, what's the big uh, trajectory for you guys in terms of this value proposition? This seems to be amazing. And again, highlights the advantages of how technology really solves a problem, but the outcome on the patient side is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, so, so the challenge for us is, uh, the, the, or the, the, the development that we have made, the leap we have made, is to, to be able to automatically turn these 2D images into a 3D model. So we take each of the slices of an of a MRI or CT scan using uh, AWS's machine learning, we construct a 3D micromillimeter precise uh, representation of that anatomy. That's only possible. First of all, we train the algorithms that we created on the Amazon platform using over a million pre-labeled CT scans. So our system automatically detects at a pixel level what is bone, what is ligament, what is an artery or a blood vessel. And with the training that we're able to perform, we've been able to, with, with these million uh, images, we've been able to, in effect, train our system to automatically uh, detect the different parts of the anatomy to this uh, micro precise level. It hasn't been previously possible. Uh, this technology or, or the ability to create 3D models has existed for maybe 10 or 15 years, but it's it's needed experts like Tim to, to in effect manually code this, the 2D image at a pixel level and codify it so some software can turn that into a 3D image. And that typically took eight or 10 hours of an expert like Tim to do. And the problem is Tim could only do one at a time. We estimate there are about 3 million of these complex surgeries each year in the world that need or could benefit from greatly from this uh, enhanced imaging. And we couldn't get three, 3 million mandates of experts like Tim to do that. So we had to automate this process. Now on the AWS platform, we could do thousands of these models in parallel. And each model will take maybe a few minutes to turn from the CT into the M, into the, the the 3D representation. So through the power of the Amazon Public Cloud, we've been able to provide this this powerful machine learning automated solution that can actually scale to the, the demand that we hope to see in the world. Dr. Brown, talk about the impact because I mean Andy Jassy, the CEO of AWS, always talks about this when I interview him. He says, you know, we're here to help do the heavy lifting. This sounds like some pretty heavy lifting, uh, what was just talked about. I mean, the manual work involved, you have essentially have yeah. collective intelligence and supercomputer power with AWS. What's your take on this as this evolves? I mean, why isn't everyone doing this? Yeah, well, I don't know why everyone isn't doing it. Uh, that's, that's, that's the key question, it really is. Um, from my perspective, there is no heavy lifting at all. Um, what I do is I push a couple of buttons, I input a bit of data and I send it off. And from my perspective, it is about as easy as it gets. It's probably as easy as sending an email, which we do hundreds of times a day. And um, so from, from, from my perspective, I'm delighted to say that there is no heavy lifting at all. I get a patient's data. I send the data through to Excel, who um, will then phone me and say, listen, Tim, what is it exactly that you want? There's a very personal service from Axial um, and uh, a couple of days later, there's a delivery of a beautiful life-size uh, 3D representation model, which I can then take to plan and um, treat a patient with. So um, the heavy lifting really has all been done, uh, as Roger alluded to in the past, it was hugely um, time-consuming uh, work that required a huge amount of training, but now basically that's been replaced with a push of the button and these supercomputers have taken all of my heavy lifting away. And um, I think this is one of the true uh, representations of how technology really, really advances um, real world solutions. And um, my patients are the benefactors from this. Roger, Dr. Brown, lay out the architecture because first of all, pretend I want to take this to every single friend that I have here in California and around the world. I want to just deploy this. What's the architecture and what's needed on the deployment side, say at to Belfast, as you deploy this? What's kind of involved? Can you just take us through high level? I must say cloud scale is amazing, no doubt about it. We just talked about that, but what's involved on the architecture side? Am I standing up a bunch of EC2s? Is there SageMaker involved? I mean, what's the architecture and then deployment, what does that look like? 
Sure. So uh, w taking a slight step back, one of the challenges when, when we as the med tech community try and introduce innovation into healthcare, into hospitals, the, the hospital's IT uh, infrastructure network, by definition, is often pretty locked down. So if we're trying to bring new software and load it and install it into the, the hospital data system, that is a huge, often lengthy process that has to jump through lots of hoops in terms of IT, network, uh, uh, compliance, lots of different steps along the journey. And that often was for very good reasons, is a, is a significant barrier to the timely adoption of, of innovative technologies like ours. What, a, what uh, platforming uh, Axial 3D on AWS allows, we're just another website. As, as Dr. Tim has said, his, uh, only, the, the, his only existence with Axial 3D in terms of in, in interface is dragging and dropping the CT scan into our website, into our portal. That portal exists totally on the uh, AWS uh, instance uh, in whatever region we, we are, are working. The data, for example, in the US never leaves the US. Uh, we use the, the, the uh, public cloud version uh, in US East. Uh, we take advantage of many features within uh, AWS, but a SageMaker is, is probably at the core of what we do. It's that innovation that, that AWS introduced now several years ago that has allowed us to, to produce this, this uh, machine learning trained uh, set of algorithms that allow us to give this disruption. And it sounds like the more you use it, the more it gets smarter. Is that as well? Absolutely. So our journey is, as Tim said, uh, we're on a journey, not only in terms of the technology and, and you're very per uh, perceptive in terms of, yes, the more we train it, the more we train it on specific uh, anatomy types or pathology types or trauma types, the better our system gets at recognizing the specific characteristics of those. But more importantly, this is about the journey, how having made this disruption, yeah. we make the change and transformation of uh, new standards of care, of care pathways. That's the innovation that, that we just enable. It's amazing surgical teams like Tim's that make that transformation. Dr. Brown, now on your side, you're sitting there, I, I got a big problem trying to solve these problems. I got patients who want, but want better outcomes, they want to live. I don't want to throw away kidneys so I don't have to. You just solve that problem. Now when he when they bring that over, what was it like over on your side of the house as a practitioner deploying it? You got a, you got two jobs going on. You're kind of doing IT integration on one hand and you're a surgeon on the other trying to make things happen. You know, what I see this is not a lot of IT here. What's the deployment look like? Yeah, deployment to me is, I don't know why everyone else isn't doing it. It's such a straightforward, easy situation. Um, it's it's remarkable, really. Um, it, it's such a good solution. Um, I think part of any sort of change management uh, program, and this again is change management, um, it's challenging the way we think about things. It's challenging people's comfort zones. Um, and anytime we need to change, we've got this anatomy of change. We've got innovators. We've got early adopters, we've got late adopters. And I think what we're going to see over the next five to 10 years is people recognizing that this technology is a game changer, possibly being driven by their patients who say, I want a 3D model and I want to see what this actually looks like. Because um, basically that black and white picture you're showing me doesn't make any sense to me. And I think there's going to be the two drivers is that the first is that we want to have uh, consistency of care uh, and a lack of variation in our care across across all all services, but as well as that, the patients I think are going to drive this as well. So once once we get the innovators and the early adopters of this technology on board, then we'll see a tipping point, and that's uh, you, that's when it becomes an acceptable and normal thing for people to do when they come into hospital. They'll be shown uh, a printout of their a three D printout model of their of their pathology and that will be used to inform their uh, decision-making for their treatment processes. And that's a true collaboration between doctor or surgeon and the patient. And that's, that's where we need to be in, in the 21st century. It's, it's got to be a, a collaborative decision-making process. Uh, and you talked about um, patient journeys and, uh, and this, this is a really integral part. This is the roadmap of your journey. 
to a large extent. So um, I think this, I can see this, this being rolled out worldwide, being driven by patients and by uh, a correction and variability of healthcare provision. That's a great example. And it's an innovative award winner for the most uh, innovative use of artificial intelligence and machine learning, 3D images, saving lives. Congratulations, Tim, Roger, it's phenomenal. Final question as we end this out. Um, what's the scar tissue, pun intended? What, you know, what did you learn? Uh, what are some of the things that you could share with folks as people look at this and say, this is an example of cloud scale and, the, and technology for good. What lessons have you learned? What can you share for folks? Take a minute to explain each, but Roger, we'll start with you. Yeah, sure. So I, I think a, n a number of, of lessons for us on this journey, as, as Tim says, this is a, uh, we're at the start of a journey of understanding the power of, of the, the, what 3D imaging can bring uh, just to uh, providing a consistent uh, or less variable uh, care, but also as, as, as Tim also alluded to, in terms of, of the patient understanding. I think that patient understanding is one of the huge leap forwards that we, we, we didn't set out initially thinking we're going to be able to help educate and better inform patients. But that was one of the derived benefits that suddenly became apparent. So that was a great lesson. I think the incredible levels of adoption that we're starting to see across the US, across Europe, because it's so easy to adopt compared to traditional IT methods, surgeons just register for our website and they can start transacting and, and, and getting service from us as opposed to having to have these huge IT programs. So I think we're now starting to really scratch the surface and start seeing the benefits of this isn't an administrative system, it's not an EHR system, it's not a finance system where maybe uh, healthcare was comfortable in, in using public cloud. This is core, hardcore clinical services, clinical diagnosis, clinical education, and the Amazon cloud is enabling that. It just wouldn't be possible without this technology. But we're at the start of the journey. But the, the, the lessons we're learning are just, are just uh, mind-numbing. Dr. Tim Brown, end the, take us home, end the segment with your take, lessons learned yeah. and advice to others. I think uh, the lessons learned are um, that uh, doctors and healthcare providers are all extremely wary of change, of new innovations, because they feel that already they're overburdened. Uh, probably my colleagues in the States and across Europe are, feel like me, we're a bit overburdened by all the things that we have to do. Um, and this may potentially have been a more difficult or adds to your workload. In actual fact, this makes your workload a lot easier and convincing people and getting people to understand that this really does make your life a lot easier. It actually removes all the scar tissue, it removes the difficulties that have been put in place by, um, uh, by organizations. Uh, and once people realize that, that's what, that there is no heavy lifting and this will make a huge difference to your practice and to your patient's understanding of your practice. And once that, once that people really realize that, then the tipping point will be achieved and I'm looking forward to that day because this, this is going to be the new normal in the next five to 10 years. Well, the performance that you're putting up, the numbers of 90 transplants successfully over six weeks dwarfs the full year last year, really kind of shows the outcome as a game changer. And again, congratulations on your success. Roger, thank, thank you for coming on. Congratulations on being the award winner, AWS partner for the most innovative AI and machine learning solutions. Thanks for taking the time for part of this AWS Partner Awards program. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay, I'm John Furrier. We're covering the AWS Public Sector Partner Awards program put on by theCUBE and AWS Public Sector Partners. Thanks for watching.